What's up guys, I'm Ryan, the owner of this channel, Extra Medium. We've been interviewing a lot of street vendors and I've noticed that it's a pretty untapped market. So I decided to start a little business and I wanna show you how easy it is to start. I bought a punching arcade machine and we took it to downtown Grand Rapids and put it on the street corner on a Saturday night and we wanted to see how much money we could make. Tell me a little bit about how you got this idea and how you got started. Yeah, so one night we were at the Foling warehouse and in the corner they have a bunch of arcade games and they had the punching bag machine and people were just lighting it up. There was so many people going back and forth challenging their friends and it seemed like that was the only thing that people were playing there more than the Foling even and for myself, I thought that was amazing. I thought it was like a huge opportunity there to take that boxing arcade machine and bring it to the streets. And so that's what we did. I think that in the street vending business industry, there's a lot of food and there's very little entertainment, mainly because events provide the entertainment. But I think a lot of people still like those side businesses that then go look at and maybe challenge themselves or their friends and have two separate avenues of entertainment. So yeah, I just, I think it's a really good idea and I wanted to test it out. So I was looking on Facebook Marketplace to find this punching arcade machine and it took me about two months to find one. There was one in Toledo, Ohio and I reached out to the guy. It was $1,500 and I didn't really want to drive out there, but I asked him if he would deliver it and he said it would be $250 and I was like, all right, that's a done deal. Like bring it out here. I don't have to waste the whole day driving. So he brought it out. So it ended up being 1750. Luckily I had a trailer already. One of the other things that we had to get was a portable generator, like one of the quiet ones. So I had to rent that from Home Depot. That ended up being like $67. And then other than that, just like an extension cord and that's about it. So yeah, this was like a one-time thing and it was for this video. I didn't plan on spending any money on advertising and I don't really think you have to. We just took the machine and brought it out to the street corner. Luckily, we had a few connections with another street vendor there and I think it advertises itself. There is so many people walking around and they want to be entertained or they want to compete with their friends and I think it's just going to sell itself. I don't think you need to do any advertising to bring people out there. If you can form some sort of community, I think that would definitely benefit you. But from the beginning stages, I think just bringing out there, being out there all night is gonna do a lot more for you. Word of mouth is this big, like it's gonna spread. One friend's gonna do it, he's gonna go into the bar and tell someone else they're gonna come out later and try to hit it. It's just like a snowball effect and it keeps going. I did have a couple of friends help me. They were holding signs. So I guess you could say that's like advertising, but they were kind of just being the saleswoman and pulling people in while I was filming. Cause if not, I would have been pretty much doing that job, but instead I was filming for this video. So I think this business can go so many different ways. I think you can bring the punching machine to the street as a vendor. I think you can take it to a bar and leave it there and just let it collect over time. Or I think you can take it to like Facebook marketplace and rent it out for weddings, bachelor parties, uh, birthday parties, whatever. Personally, if you wanna just have fun and you're young, I would take it to the streets because it's just like super entertaining. If you don't wanna deal with anything at all, try to bring it to the bar, let it collect money over time, try to buy more machines. And then if you want somewhere in the middle where you don't mind managing it a little bit, I would do the events and try to rent it out and personally that could probably be your best money over time but i think all are great ideas and it's just whatever works with your lifestyle do you think one of the ways you could grow it would be by bringing multiple machines to one area i think if you want to grow this business in general you have to bring more machines out no matter what one machine in, in each of those is only going to make you maybe 500 dollars a week max but if you want to get past that into the thousands i think you're going to have to need like three to five machines if you're bringing out to the street corner having three machines i think it can benefit you because you're now you have three different high scores that people can try and beat while we were out here we had so many people come up and they're just talking about 
oh, this is a weak high score. I'm going to beat this. I'm getting like 900, maybe more. A few moments later. They weren't even close. They would come back later and spend more money and they weren't even close again. And I think that's just like the beauty of this business is it provides competition and as more and more competition comes, the more you get paid. But the same thing, if you're putting it in bars, say it's gonna make $50 a night or a weekend even, if you have 10 of those all around town, now you're making $500 a weekend or however you wanna look at it. And then same thing from the uh, rental space side. But sometimes the more things you have, the more problems you might have. And then you might need more employees as well or friends helping or whatever. So speaking of that, if you were gonna grow this business, what expenses do you think would come up for you? So for the expenses side, you're definitely gonna need a trailer, like a dolly, a generator, and then you're gonna need a place to store the machines. So if you have a house, you'll probably be good to go or some sort of barn or warehouse or just storage unit. Well, they're in that, it's, I think it's pretty low overhead. Like you don't need that many things to like run this business. You just need the machines. And if you're technical, it's also better because you can probably work on them if they do break. Luckily, I didn't have to like do too much maintenance on it. We had like one issue with the screen with the scores and stuff. But other than that, I think it's just a, there's simple machines. If your business did become mainstream, would you need to worry about things like vendor's license, maybe insurance and then employee costs as well? Yeah, I think you're gonna need liability insurance. I think you're gonna need a vendor's license and then you might need one employee helping you. I had my friends help me. I had people sign waivers before they were punching. And then also I didn't have a vendor's license, but I knew this was gonna be a one-time thing. So I, I wanted to go out there and try to see how it would work. And I think that's what a lot of you guys should do with your businesses. If you're worried about starting or losing money is just sometimes you have to fake it until you make it, but you also wanna provide a real experience. and. Doing that a few times, you can really learn like what the potential is in your market and how hard it is. So I think you'll learn through experiences. And I think that's just one of the biggest things in businesses is to keep going. So for the night that you did this, how much did it cost to play? How much did you guys make? Tell me what happened. We were out there for about four hours and we could have been there for probably six or seven. We went from about 8 p.m. to midnight and first set up we started like going downtown around seven and it took us probably an hour to get the stuff ready to go park or find parking stuff like that and then same thing for leaving it took us a bit to load everything up and get out of there but ideally you'd probably want to go from like 8 p.m to 2 a.m 3 a.m depending on where you live we chose just those quick four hours we made about 152 dollars we gave away about $50 in winnings. So it was $3 for one punch or $5 for two punches. And we wanted to do that to incentivize people to do two punches. And then if you beat the high score, you would get $10. Later throughout that evening, we realized not a lot of girls were punching. So we wrote on the sign, $1 for a hose. And we actually ended up getting a lot more girls coming out and punching. I don't know if that's like the best route to make money is to do $1 because it would take 10 people to get about two people at $10. And just as time goes, it's like you're better to collect the, the money at $5 than to grab those ones. But for the girls, I think they knew they weren't gonna beat the high score. So that was our incentive to get them to come punch. If we had to do it over again, I think another thing that we would do would be to make a girls high score category and a guys high score category, and then charge them equally at $3 per punch and $5 for two punches. And I think that would have generated the most money. After that, yeah, it was like, we made like $152. I think we could have probably made another $152 after uh, midnight to 2 a.m., 3 a.m. Because I think that's, that's like gonna be the best crowd. We just didn't feel like we needed to be out there. We were just there to make the video. We got what we needed and we made enough money in that time frame. We had about 35 people punch the bag. We took 
Venmo, Cash App, and Cash. I think we had about $35 in each Cash App and Venmo, and then the rest of the money, like $85 in cash. So I think it also helps to take different forms of payment. There were a bunch of people that were like, do you guys take credit card? And we didn't because I, I don't have a credit card machine and I wasn't gonna buy one just for this video. I would definitely recommend having different pay structures and testing that out and what people wanna punch in or how much people wanna pay for punching and not. And then you have to reward because I don't think people are gonna do it unless there's a reason to beat something. If you're trying to make money from it, if you're just gonna you know, put it in a bar, obviously you can leave it at one or two dollars and people are just gonna go at it over time. I think you should have some sort of pay structure, some sort of schedule that you work on and I think that's the best way to do it. Did any crazy stories take place or anything funny happen while you were out there? Yeah, being out there is super entertaining. There's just so many stories that you can take away from one night. I can't imagine being out there every night. We had two people with, with bloody hands or knuckles because they punched through the thing and then hit the, the actual machine. We had people that won the high score and they were side betting other people like betting them five or ten dollars that they wouldn't beat their high score. We had one guy saying he was just down there, he comes down there for entertainment, and then we were there and he's like, this is the best entertainment I've ever seen. And he ended up being almost like a security guard for us when one of the concerts got let out from Van Andel. He was kind of like blocking people off. So yeah, it was just like, Super exciting. We had tons of brides out there. We had people trying to teach people how to punch before they're even punching it. It was pretty like chaotic, but also very fun. I would definitely do it again if I wanted to be full time in that industry. I think there's the right people out there that can do that and make really good profits from that. What do your day-to-day -day operations look like? Ideally, how many times a week do you think you should be out there on the streets? And how much time are you spending during that time? If you're just gonna do it as a street vendor, I would look for big events that you can go to. Or if you wanna just do the bar scene, I would be out there Friday night, Saturday night. I would recommend being there from about 8 p.m. until 2 or 3 a.m. because I think that's just your best window because people are going to see you as they leave dinner or as they go into the bar and then when they're coming out they're going to be ready to be entertained again. If you're doing like local events we didn't get a chance to do anything like that but I think there's enough people there and you'll probably stand out because it's just going to be a bunch of other food trucks or street vendors at those events and you'll be like the only person providing entertainment. So I would recommend either of those paths. What are three tips of business advice that you have for someone starting out? So yeah, my first tip would be to just start something. Like it doesn't matter what it is, just start, just go at it. Because I think the biggest thing is people don't start and then they don't learn. There's so many times for myself even where I've, I've looked at a business and I'm like, oh man, I can do so well in this. And even with this business, I was like, oh man, we're gonna get $500 easily. And then when you actually start it and you go do it and you invest like a little bit of time into it, you realize like, okay, it's a little bit harder than you think. You have to spend a little bit more time than you think. That's the whole point of just going out there and starting it is it makes you learn things that you don't think that are actually there. And I think for any business, the best way is just to go at it and you'll learn so much more. And similar to that, my second tip is don't be afraid to fail. When you go out there and you start, you're gonna fail. Like you're gonna learn like, oh my gosh, this is so hard. But it's like, you have to push over that hump. Cause there were so many times where I wanted to make this video and, and I'm just like, it's not gonna work. I'm just gonna sell it all. You, like you're always gonna have negative thoughts come to your mind, but you gotta just like, push over those humps, you'll make it out there, you'll sell a little or a lot, you'll meet people that you thought you'd never meet in your life. It just like boosts your mood to like keep going and people will tell you like, oh, this is amazing or whatever. They'll give you feedback as well and then you can learn from that. But yeah, you can't be afraid to lose or fail because if not, you'll never make it. And then my last tip would be to research any business that you're going into. You're gonna need to learn so much more than you think. So when you're starting and, and you're going out there, 
make sure that you do your research on just every little thing and do your research on other companies that are in your space because they're gonna pretty much tell you what to do and what not to do. I think that's one of the easiest ways to learn is researching your competition, researching your industry, and then researching just like the outer skirts of all of that. And usually that'll push you into the right direction of what you need to learn to grow and succeed. So another thing with starting a business is you can always invest your money in and then you can sell it after you've tried. And if you don't like it or you think it's too hard or you can't see yourself doing this in the future, you can sell it. And just like this, I listed my boxing machine on Facebook Marketplace today because I bought it to make this video. It's not something that I wanna get into full time, but it was simple as that. I, I got a boxing machine. I made, I had a few connections. I took it to the street and I made a few hundred dollars and then I learned. And I think that's all you need to do to start a business is invest a little bit of money, go out there and do it, and then decide if you wanna keep doing this or not. I just wanna say thank you to everyone that came out and hit the machine. It wasn't about making money, it was about making this video and I appreciate it. And thanks to Tori Mac, Paul, and Gringo Hot Dogs for helping us out. And thank you so much. Enjoy this montage. Peace. So far, we have been asked for our numbers. We got tips. And we got tips. So. She can if she wants. I don't know that I recommend that. Oh, there we go! Oh, that's a good hit. Talk to me. Talk to me. Talk to me. Give me oh. a hit. Oh.